A very good morning, students. We are in our regular class lecture, and the subject is mining geology. And this is the third part of the video, which we are talking about the open cast mining. And for this topic, I have referred the books, the course in mining geology by Aravind Swami, textbook of mining geology by Kumatia. So so far, what we had seen is what is uh, open cast mining, why we should go for open cast mining, and how it is done. In that also, we have discussed about uh, loading by hand. Then in loading by machine, we had seen how drag line as well as the power shovel works, right? So in this video, I will try to cover the scrappers. land dredgers and old burden bridge or t bridge the scrappers are also used for surface mining a scrapper comprises essentially a u shaped steel plate which when dragged along the ground collects the broken material to a desired spot so this is a sketch of a scrapper where you can see this is a u shaped steel plate so which is moved actually to collect the broken rock material the chains are attached to the two limbs of the plate as well as the back so these are the two limbs of the plate so this is the chain which connects these two as well as there is a chain in the back side of this uh, u shaped steel plate the wire ropes are attached to the chain and passed over the pulley so that the adjusting the length through the pulley the scrappers can make to move back and forth so these are the wire ropes so this is the wire rope 1 and this is wire rope 2 and this is the pulley 1 and this is the pulley 2 So just by adjusting the length of the wire rope, you can adjust the position of this uh, U-shaped scrapper. So by this adjusting this, this, you can move it forward and backward. By this uh, movement, you can collect the material which has been already uh, broken down there by the process of say blasting or any other way. Okay. The scrappers are used essentially for collecting loose materials and not for excavation. So the prime work of the scrapper is to collect the broken rock material and not to break anything new. Okay, so this is what the prime uh, work of the scrapper. And the scrappers are also employed in underground mining in stopes for pushing ore into the overpass where the dip or low. So when you are dealing with underground mining, what happens if the dip of the ore body is say steeply dipping, right? So when the rock is or the ore body is broken down, what happens? This will simply follow the slope or the follow the dip of the rock formation or the ore formation and slides down to the ore pass. But in the case of gently dipping ore, what happens? This will not move. So they are using scrappers in the underground mines, and such a type of scra scrappers are called the slashers. So when you are using scrappers in the underground mining, it is called as slashers. Okay. So this is a generalized outline of the scrappers. So let us the next heading, which is the land dredgers. Especially in alluvial mining, we had discussed about the dredgers, right? Where you you remember there is a boat in which there was a dredging device, right? So by rotation, just like this, there is a wheel or something. So just by rotation, it will simply lift the material from the bottom of the say lake or sea or anything. and that will be processed in this where there is a sieve is there right the same way the same mechanism is actually acting in the land it is called as land dredges okay so in this case what happens the land dredges are similar in operation to the pantoon dredge employed in alluvial mining the dredge in this case is mounted on a caterpillar and is stationed at the edge of the quarry bench so this is the quarry bench so this is stationed at this point so by rotation of this thing you can lift the material from this side right so that the bucket touches the face as the chain bucket to moves upward the material from the quarry face is excavated and carried along so when it is rotated what happens the material in this quarry face will be lifted break lift and carried to this portion right and the material is dropped from the bucket into the revolving screen so this is the revolving screen 3 and then into the conveyor belt so there is a conveyor belt after uh, deposited here in this it will be separated and those uh, size of material which is required that will be transported to the conveyor belt which is attached here okay for loading into the wagon for transport so after this there will be a wagon or even a mine car or something will be there so which will be transported to that portion so you can see these are the two different uh, dredges but this is a giant one and this is a small one right so here you can see by rotation this will lift the material from the mine face and this will be dropped here where there will be conveyor belt or something so that will be transported to the desired position so this is how it works so this is the land dredgers work then the last one is the over burden bridge or the t bridge in some of the large open cast working where a large amount of over burden stripping is necessary equipment known as over burden bridges are employed for removing both mineral deposit 
and the top color okay so this is the generalized sketch of this uh, overburden bridge or the tail bridge where the over body so let us see this uh, this b is the over body the over body as well as the overburden are removed simultaneously as well it will be dumped in the other side of the mine where the already excavation is done okay the main purpose of the bridge as its name implies is to transport soil as well as the ore across the mine it is advantageous as it forms shortcut for backfilling so when a mine is started excavation starts from here so as it progress what happens the overburden will be backfilled in the earlier mined portion right so this is how it happens where you may not need much space for dumping your material okay the pit after excavator excavating the mineral deposit simultaneously uh, with min mining operation moves forward so when the mining operation starts the pit this is the pit right so at this stage it is here so it will move further towards this side as you can see the material will be removed from this portion where the mineral deposit uh, will be transported to the desired say over processing unit and the overburden will be dumped in this backfill the region right so this is how it works the bridge itself can be moved forward as it moves on the rail so there will be rails here so through which uh, on which this will be moving the land ridges uh, located at point 1 and 2 on the right are employed for stripping so these are the land ridges so this will be used for stripping for, for both overburden as well as the mineral deposit the debris now fall on the belt conveyor so this C is the conveyor belt right and then the conveyor C and finally dumped as at S where the mineral deposits are already been excavated so this will be removed from this side and this will be conveyed to the conveyor belt where this conveyor belt will transport the overburden to this side where backfilling will be taking place and the mineral deposit will be removed and uh, transported to the mineral processing unit okay so this is how a T bridge or the overburden bridge works and here is a short video you can see the actual size of the T bridge okay so this is the conveyor belt where the ore is transported to the other side of the mine and this is the portion where the mineral as well as the ore burden is removed. Is that clear? And if you have any doubt, you just mention it in the comment section and we will discuss in the upcoming video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.